Good morning. My name is Lauren Glenn, and I'm here to discuss chapter three of Howard Thurman's Jesus and the Disinherited title Deception. So he starts off by telling us how the weak have always used deception against the strong as a survival strategy from animals to children to the prophets to the enslaved. Basically, the disinherited are well versed in playing possum. Howard Thurman makes a case that we shouldn't rely on deception as a tool. He asks the question, do the disinherited by participating in deception allow themselves to see life as merely just physical existence? Does nothing else matter? One might ask him, is there not a time and a place for deception that keeps dignity intact and gives way to a good life? He says, no. You use deception as your only catalyst toward asserting your humanity and you begin to embody the lie or you eventually begin to embody the lie. Now he offers us three alternatives that the disinherited might consider if deception is no longer a viable option to keep in one's arsenal. So the first one is that there is no alternative, right? You, you just give up. You accept your lot in life what you say doesn't matter. You can never be victorious. Now he says this way of thinking has its consequences, of course. It destroys whatever sense of ethical value the people have. There are no moral distinctions. So this is definitely not a good option. The second alternative is to compromise. Now deception is a survival strategy in plain sight, right? It's tricking the enemy into believing there is nothing for them to worry about. All is as it should be. Now, compromise, on the other hand, involves coming to the table with the dominant group and mistakenly assuming we are on equal footing because we feel we are. And Thurman argues this is problematic because, again, there is no moral appeal. Why? Because the disinherited are compromising just to survive. No plans, just survival. The possibility of freedom never comes up. I'll do whatever you say to keep living. And today that might be called respectability politics. You know, don't speak this way or don't speak this way in front of the dominant group. Don't dress, don't dress this way. Don't wear your hair this way. Comply. Humanity never comes up. And Thurman says that compromise is something for the dominant group, not the disinherited. And he tells us that with compromise, an artificial and exaggerated emphasis upon not being killed cheapens the lives of the disinherited. Our lives are lightly held by the dominant group and it creates the same attitude among ourselves. And this is further explained in our last chapter, chapter two, fear, where he says that the disinherited children are robbed of much of the careless rapture and spontaneous joy of being alive. And some of this comes from the adults of the disinherited group. So compromise is also not a good alternative to deception. Now, our last alternative gets us in alignment with the message and life of Jesus. Telling the complete truth, no matter what happens. Sincerity. But this means we are exposed. There is no strategy that will guarantee survival. There's no deception to protect our physical existence. So when telling the truth, you must accept the cost. And Thurman tells us this can be cost of life, limb, or security. However, when the disinherited decide to tell the truth and decide that the dominant group is not all powerful, then the dominant group will now have to deal with their own value and morals. And Thurman says our relationship to each other and our relationship to God is the same relationship. Now, power is nothing if it's not acknowledged by those who are being dominated. Only then can we interact with each other as human beings in relationship instead of weak versus strong. And at that point, our humanity is now acknowledged. Thank you.